What's up? And welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Poop Play Kanzai the second turn. So last time we actually left off, um, we found out that Mr. Autumn had died of poisoning and we are now allowed to wander. So now, oh, and we did find out as well that um, Detective Gursky actually knows who we are and we had a sister and she died of some sort. So it's getting a little bit interesting and now we're actually starting to learn about the character. So let's get through to it. So let's move. Um, let's go in here. As I enter the hallway, I'm nearly run over by a guy as he rushes out from around the corner. Whoa! Uh, sorry, dude. He skids to a halt and jumps a few times, holding his hands out in self-defense. Uh, hi. He stops for a moment to look me over. Never seen you around before. You're not one of Liam's friends, are you? Not really. Oh, good. I can't stand Liam's friends. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Your secret's safe with me, I guess. Who are you? Kevin. I'm the IT guy. I run all the security here. Got a blip in my system saying the power went out, so I came here to see what happened. Sophia hasn't been answering my calls. <clears throat> you came here? I thought the house was in lockdown. Kevin taps the temple of his head. Uh, Master code unlocks any door. Right. And who are you again? Can guy. I'm a uh, special investigator. <clears throat> Wicked. So Big Will is finally gonna bring down the hammer on Liam in his little nightlife. Big Will? Does he mean William Orton? Um, actually, Mr. Orton just passed away. Kevin stares at me blankly for a moment, but his expression slowly changes as he processes my statement. Passed away? As in, dead? Well, no shit, Sherlock. Fucking hell. I'm not entirely sure. There's another way to interpret that. Whoa. Kevin runs his fingers through his hair and laughs nervously. No, it's, sorry, man. This is just... Wow, I can't believe it. It's kind of unreal, you know? I just saw him yesterday and he looked fine. Well, as fine as a guy his age can look. Well, as fine as a super paranoid guy his age can look. <laughs> you just had to add that in there, didn't you, Kevin? Well, <coughs> as fine as a super paranoid guy who drinks a lot at his age. Yeah, I get it. So, what happened? I don't even know what happened myself. I'm not exactly sure what to tell this guy. Um, let's say heart attack. I'm not sure. Probably a heart attack or something? That's not a surprise. He kept refusing to see a doctor. Man, Sophia would beg him to at least get a checkup, but he'd have none of that. Don't quote me on that, though. I can't say for sure if it is or if it isn't. Really is a shame, though. He was a good man. Did a lot of good work in the medical world. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Otten Engineering was big into making fake organs and stuff. I hear they saved a lot of lives. Man. Dead? Really? He shakes his head. Sorry. That's just too weird. I'm still having a hard time believing it. Kevin blinks a few times, as if he's not sure he's really awake. I'll be in the security room if you need me. It's the first door on the left here in this hallway. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so that's handy to know where he is. So what is this room? Where did we go last time? We went there. So what's out here? Ooh, where should we go? Um, let's go in this one then. Okay. So we're in the kitchens. The atmosphere in the kitchen is tense. The sound of my footsteps sounds usually loud on the tile floor. Hey. Hey. Naki welcomes me with a heartful smile. Sophia is standing at the other end of the kitchen, sipping slowly on a cup of tea. Her eyes don't waver from the small cup in her hands. I lean in towards Naki. Is she okay? She's feeling better. Still a little shaken up though. She was crying pretty hard when we found Mr. Otten's body. Kangai. 
Yes. I hope you don't mind if I ask you something. Uh, no. Go ahead. How did you know that something bad happened to Mr. Alton? Um, that... Naoki, please. I was asking Kanga. Sorry. So, how did you know? Uh, oh boy, what should I say? If I tell the truth, she might think I'm crazy, but I really don't want to lie to her. Mm, I don't really think it's her, because I mean, she was with Detective Gursky at the time, and I don't think she would. So, let's be honest with her. Um, I guess you could say I have a sort of sixth sense. A sixth sense? As in psychic? I guess you could call it that. Can you give me details on how it works? Whoa, she actually sounds like she might believe me. I can't really say. I just feel things. I get sick sometimes, and then I know something bad has happened. Naki is start staring hard at me, as if I should keep quiet. I guess just talking about my cancer is a bad idea. Still, I feel as if she deserves at least a, par a partial truth. I see. I suppose it's different then. Different? From what? Many years ago, Mr. Alton experimented with extending the mental capacities of human beings. It's not like what you described, though. What sort of experiments? I don't really know much about it. It was a long time ago, before I started working for him. He just mentioned it in passing once, so I thought maybe that had something to do with it. He was terribly drunk at the time, though, so I suppose he might not have even been telling the truth. I'm sorry, I'm jumping to the strangest conclusions here. I must not be in a very good frame of mind right now. Sophia sighs and shuts her eyes. She looks like she wants to start crying again. I'm sorry, you really cared about Mr. Autumn, didn't you? For a moment, Sophia doesn't respond. Her shoulder shudders as she takes in a deep breath. Finally, she opens her eyes and speaks in barely more than a whisper. I don't know what I'm going to do now that he's gone. I'm so sorry. Naki places a gentle hand on Sophia's shoulder. For a moment, I feel strange. She definitely sounds sincere, but something about what she just said sounds off. I'm sorry. I just really want to find the person who did this. If there's anything you need to know, just ask, okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so let's actually have a talk with them. So what do you think about Mr. Orton's death? What do I think? I think it's terrible. I really don't like having to see dead bodies. <laughs> well, I mean, who do you think did it? Um, I really can't say. I don't want to make any judgments. He glances to the side and begins to absentmindedly fiddle with his fingers. Can you at least tell me your thoughts on everyone here? Well, Liam is pretty angry with his uncle. His eyebrows went down every time he spoke about him. He covered his face when Aki started asking more questions, so he's got something to hide. I'm pretty sure Marissa's hiding something too. Every time she smiles, her eyebrows go up, as if she's worried. Hmm. After she finished her interview with Mr. Otten, she was even more nervous than before. Ducky glances at Sophia before leaning in and whispering. Sophia was pretty frustrated when we came, but now she's really anxious. She won't stop pacing back and forth. <coughs> and what about Kevin? You mean that guy with the red hair? Obviously. I didn't really get to see his face. Sorry. Don't worry about it. I was just curious, really. It's good enough that you know this much. I'm kind of impressed. I've been studying body language for a while now. Uh, okay, thanks. Feel free to come talk more if you want. So let's talk to him. Why do you work for Miss Autumn? Mr. Alton values my services. I am a trained professional and an excellent personal assistant. That wasn't really an answer. What I mean, what's, what I meant was why did you choose to work for him? I have personal reasons, but my employment is both legal and morally sound. Okay. 
Of course. Let's examine the worm. Oh, I didn't know that. There's hot tea in there. That can... Okay. Fridge is pretty well stocked, but it's pretty packed for you. I guess no one cooks one around here. Microwave, it's easy, it's very clean. Sophia keeps things tidy around here. The door leads back to the hallway. It's just a normal kettle. It's a dish towel. It's empty. It's empty. Oh, it's empty. Mm. Uh, I guess I'm done. Um, so let's leave here. Examine room. There's a retina scanner. The door only unlocks if you have a clearance. There's a keypad, etc. A bit we could override. Um, if any of that uh, Same thing. It's an old painting on silk roll. It appears to be a mountain of some sort. Mm. Oh, well, there's not much to explore here, is there? <laughs> okay, let's go here. Ooh, this is an interesting room. Let's examine the room. These plates are the same animals to appreciate. I guess creatures really are important. Some old armor. Uh, nothing important. Some old really like, this is not that important. I'm not sure of this. Even when it's not. Okay. Let's talk to Lee May. So Lee May is gazing blankly in the direction of a collection of old plates. I approach, but she barely seems to notice my presence. So, uh, hey. Li Mei blinks slowly and turns to face me. She nods once to acknowledge my presence. I shift my weight from one foot to the next as she stares at me expectantly. What am I even supposed to say? How are you feeling? She stares at me with a mixture of surprise and confusion. I don't know. God damn it, this rain! Ugh. It's like heavily raining outside and it's really annoying because I can just hear it just starting to get heavier and heavier. Anyway, um, she states it so simply, I almost feel foolish for asking. I guess I was just wondering if you were okay since someone died after all. She tilts her head and looks at me curiously. Does it bother you? Does what bother me? Death. Oh, um... Well, it goes both ways. Like, death would always bother you. But you would be used to it as well. So I'm not really sure what to say about that. I mean, yeah, it would bother me. I mean, even if I've experienced it before, that doesn't mean that I'm okay with it. Death is a terrible thing, no matter how often you see it. I stare at my hands and rub my fingers slowly together. My palms feel sweaty. What about you? Li Mei stares at me curiously, as if she doesn't fully understand my question. I mean, are you bothered by death? She fidgets and examines her open palms the same way I just did. Slowly she rubs together her fingertips, as if she's never seen her hands before. Finally she speaks. He was very scared. Mr. Orton? Yes, but even though I felt his fear, I knew that I was not scared. I'm not scared, and I still feel scared. Does that mean I'm bothered or not bothered? I sigh and lean against the door frame. You know, I've always wondered what it would be, what it would feel like to die. Li Mei tilts her head to the side. She looks curious. I mean, I've experienced death, of course, but they're not mine. And somewhere in the back of my mind, every time I do it, I always know it's not mine. I've always wondered, when I die, will I be afraid, or will I think that it's just someone else's death again? Or maybe by the time I die. I'll be so comfortable with it, I won't care, even though I know it's mine. I turn to face Li Mei. She's watching my face carefully. I don't know. That wasn't really an answer, huh? I laugh and shrug casually. 
Honestly, I don't even know why I said any of that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there isn't really an answer. You and I both have to carry other people's emotions. It's tiring and sometimes it's confusing. But I think that if we didn't have these abilities, we'd still be sad when other people are sad and scared when other people are scared. That's just being human. Lee Mae smiles and takes my hand in hers. Thank you. You're welcome. She's so cute. <laughs> um, sure, you're welcome. Oh my god, there's so many questions! Um, okay. What is everyone feeling right now? Now he is scared. No, I mean the others, not our friends. Oh, I apologize. It's okay. It's fine, I wasn't very specific. Lime takes a deep breath and closes her eyes again. This time, it takes her a little longer to sort out her thoughts. Sophia is sad. She feels as if there is no hope, but there is also relief. What? Relief? Again, I feel uneasy about Sophia. Earlier when I asked her if she cared about Mr. Orton, she didn't really answer me. All she said was that she didn't know what she'd do now that he's gone. I don't know why that bugs me so much, but it seems like she was avoiding the question. Marissa is scared and disappointed. There's so much emotion inside of her. It's all flowing at the same time. She wants to be happy, but she also feels very guilty. Why would she feel guilty though? Unless she's mad. Things are very complicated. Li Mei nods earnestly, as if she struck a new idea, a nod in return. Kevin is uncertain. He does not know what he should be feeling. <clears throat> How? How can you be uncertain about somebody dying? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. He definitely seems to be having trouble believing me when I told him that Mr. Orton died. Denial, I guess. I guess that makes sense. And Liam... <clears throat> is angry. I can't. What's wrong? He's with Aki right now. She is manipulating his emotions with her concept. I cannot tell what is his and what is not. Aki. That girl seems to enjoy invading everybody's privacy. I wonder, it's a wonder that Naki and Li Mei put up with her. Hopefully whatever she's up to will lead to something useful. <sighs> These are so many questions to go through. Um, what did you do before you lived with Aki and Naki? I'm not allowed to speak about that. Rude! Um, is there anything you are allowed to speak about? Lime closes her eyes and takes a small breath. Her lips move slowly, as if she's poring over the list of things she's allowed to share. Finally, she opens her eyes and smiles with a self-satisfied look on her face. I'm authorised to share anything that might aid your investigation. <laughs> Whoa, what's with that phrasing? She sounds so formal all of a sudden. It's like, oh, that was... The way her face changed from the concentrating to that little cheeky smile, just like, oh... I can talk about anything that will help you with the investigation. <laughs> okay. So what does the calligraphy, whatever it's called, in the hallway say? No dust settles here. It means that this place is quiet and safe from influence of the outside world. Ooh, interesting. Okay. How much do you know about the artifacts in this place? We may not. Um, could you maybe tell me about them? If you wish. Well, clearly! <laughs> yeah, I do. Most are safety charms meant to ward off danger. God, this guy was so paranoid! I turn to the large tapestry on the wall. What about this? What are these animals? They are the four legendary creatures. Tortoise, dragon, phoenix, and tiger. For some reason, this mythology feels familiar, but I'm not sure why. It's not anything I've ever studied. Do they stand for anything in particular? Many. Seasons, directions on the compass, sometimes schools of thought. 
overall they represent valley. It's weird. They feel kind of familiar, especially the tiger. The tiger and the dragon are mortal enemies. Li Mei reaches out as if to touch the tapestry, as she hesitates and but she hesitates and draws her hand back. The dragon represents cunning and intelligence, and the tiger represents raw power and strength. Oh my god, it's thunder! I don't, I don't actually know if you can hear it, and if you do, I'm really, really sorry. Dragon and tiger, mind and body. They fight each other constantly, but neither can win. My stomach tightens up as I look at the tapestry hanging on the wall. An endless fight where neither can win. Li Mei watches me carefully. She's trying to despair my emotions, but I don't even fully understand what I'm feeling. What bothers you? I'm not sure. It's probably nothing. Li Mei doesn't seem satisfied with my response. No surprise there, since I'm not satisfied either. I don't really have anything else to say, though, so our conversation dissolves into an uncomfortable silence. Uh, I'll talk to you later. She's an odd one talking to her. Um, I don't want to talk to Kevin yet. I'm going to come back to him last. Zamon. The entrance to the basement. There's not much to do here, is there? Let's go to the basement. The door actually opened. I guess Sophia hasn't changed my permission from before. Cool. Hmm. I can turn off the house's power from here. I probably shouldn't, though. Whoa, this box is full of papers. They all look pretty old. Hmm. Experiment results? I don't understand what any of this is about. Maybe I should ask someone trustworthy. I'll take a few of these pages and leave the rest for here now. Um, the emergency lights, they're not on right now. This box is empty. Nothing in this box. Okay, so we found some papers. That's cool. Even if what the four is a bit, it's a very nice, but okay. So let's go talk to, is it? Marissa, she should be in here. The door slides open to reveal a wide room furnished with some expensive furniture. If I had to name it, I'd call it a living room, but it doesn't feel very lived in at all. Okay, hi, hello. <laughs> hey. She looks happy to see me. Did I do something? This girl's annoying. Hey, did something happen? I saw Sophia rush by with that nice boy, but... You didn't tell me what was going on. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not sure there's a tactical way to put this. Mr. Orton died. What? Are you kidding? Uh, no. Why would you joke about that? No. Marissa stares into my eyes, searching me with a mixture of fear and panic. I stare back until the truth of the incident sinks in. Her expression changes slowly as she realizes that I'm not lying. Are you sure? What happened? What should I tell her? Um. Let's just go. Oh. I mean, we know he was murdered. I don't know what to tell her if she should report. Hmm. I think he was murdered. Murdered? The tone changed. <gasps> Suspicious. I suppose that shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Why? Did you kill him, Mother Star? What do you mean? William Otten is not a popular man. His business practices are already reprehensible. And there have been rumors of unethical treatment of some of his test subjects. Ew. That's why I came. I was hoping I'd be able to uncover something about what he might be doing. So nosy. So you're really just sneaking around trying to dig up some dirt. It's really not what you think. No, it kind of is. Okay, then what? 
Nothing. What should I ask her? Okay, let's just go with it. What sort of illegal things was Mr. Orton doing? Well, I've heard that he used to head up a series of experiments for the government back in the day. Something about altering genetics. The whole thing wasn't exactly approved as humane, and pretty much everyone was kept in the dark about it. Then how did you find out? It's a long story, but the short version is I've met a lot of the victims. I've pieced together their stories and followed the trail back to William Otten. Okay, so Mr. Orton toyed with genetics and somebody wants to kill him for it. It's a possibility, isn't it? I suppose. Uh, earlier you talked about some rumours about Liam. What was that all about? Ah, those. Well, recently, word's been going around that Liam Otten is involved in dog fighting. Ugh. Whoa, whoa. That's a felony. Not to mention extremely cruel. Well, I'm glad he chose to draw the line somewhere, at least. I'm fairly certain he was just getting fed up with Liam's antics. It's one thing to dismiss underage drinking, but the heat from Liam's participation in animal cruelty is bad publicity he didn't need. I heard he was planning on cutting Liam from his will completely. Planning on? So he didn't get around to it yet? As far as I can tell, no. But you'd really have to ask someone more knowledgeable than I. Okay. Sure thing. See you soon. Or not. She's quite handy for information though. Okay, 2000 channels, dining room table. The really nice seating area. I want that. Nothing interesting here. Okay, so let's go out of here. Um, let's go in here. We haven't been in here. Oh, it's a bathroom. Ooh, let's examine. Soap dispenser. Evergreen scented. Hmm, there's a space between the frame and the wall. So it's not a two-way mirror. I can't believe I'm checking for this. Old habits die hard, I guess. A sink. A sink. Um. More thunder. Um, there's nothing really there. Okay, let's leave then, seeing as there's nothing here. Um, Alright, let's talk to this knob. Oh, I tried the door, but it doesn't open. I thought Kevin said he'd be in here. I knock on the door and I hear the sound of footsteps. The door slides open. What's up? Um, You said you'd be here. Yeah, I did. What do you want? I crane my neck to peer over Kevin's shoulder. The room behind him looks mostly empty, but I can see the glow of television screens across the wall. Can I come in? Kevin frowns, but he steps aside to let me in. Sure, why not? Since Mr. Otten hired you, you'd probably be allowed in here anyway. It doesn't take long to scan the contents of the cold room. There's not much on the tile floor save for the single chair. A long counter stretches across one wall. It bears a lonely keyboard and mouse. Mounted on the wall are several monitors, all flickering with images of various rooms in the house. At first glance, it appears to be the room meant for high security corporate building, rather than just a house. Welcome to my Fortress of Solitude. This is the command center for the entire house. You geek. Damn, there's a lot to talk about. So can you see everything from it? He must have been able to see into Mr. Vaughan's thing and actually see who done it. Like, come on. If he was that much of a panic person, he probably would have had cameras in his own office. Not everything. Mr. Otten's office is strictly off limits. Very private, you know. No one knows what he does in there. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> he folds his arms across his chest and scowls. As if it isn't obvious. Obvious? What's obvious? Mr. Otten never likes to be far from his booze. His solution to anything stressful is to drink it away. Of course, he tries to hide it because it's not very professional, but every time he walks out of that room, he reeks of alcohol. Okay. Can you think of any other reason that someone would want Mr. Orton dead? You're kidding, right? Mm, no. 
You must be new around here. Mr. Alton's infamous around these parts. He's a ruthless sort of dude. Any little guy tries to start something new, he crushes him. Poaches employees, spreads rumors, heck, he's even brought in the courts multiple times. He'll say that these other companies are infringing on his trademark or something equally stupid. Of course, that's only the stuff we know about. If you ask me, he's got more than just dirty business practices going on. I mean, seriously, look at this place. No one builds a house like this in the middle of nowhere unless he's got something to hide. If he's not doing something illegal, I'll eat my motherboard. Okay, guys, I actually think I'm going to end this here. Um, just because this episode is getting quite long. Um, when we return back, obviously, we'll finish off our questions with Kevin. And we also need to talk to some more people. Um, see if we can get some more information out of them. And hopefully we can find out who did it. Um, yeah, suspicions are pretty high on everyone at the moment. Although, mm, I don't really think Sophia did it. Because... I just don't feel like she would do it. Like, I don't know. Just a feeling. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next